Hello, today we're going to look at the whole process into how to take a small piano piece like this and we're going to turn this into a great orchestral piece like this. So let's hear the full piano version first and then I'm going to explain how I orchestrated this. Now I'm going to show you uh, the score. Um, I started doing this on the score. So you've heard the piece, uh, you've got the first section uh, that goes up, to, uh, up until here. Uh, the first part is in C sharp minor, and then we modulate into, uh, into G sharp minor. Now, if you're interested in hearing more about the chords and the, how I compose this melody, I just recently did a video where I composed this piece. So the whole shape of the piece is, in, is into this two part. So this is something I considered when I wanted to orchestrate this. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, let's jump into uh, the orchestral version now. Let's have a quick look at the score. It's a much bigger piece now. Um, you'll see all these, uh, all these staves, uh, even given in a nice little title. So I chose to have a big orchestra. We have all the woodwinds and their extended instrument, the piccolo, English horn, bass clarinet, contrabass soon. The, these are the instruments that we don't typically have in a smaller uh, orchestra, but in a bigger orchestra we have them. And then the whole brass section, we have horns, three trumpets, three trombones, uh, tuba. I just use a timpani and cymbals for percussions. I could have used more, but this is fine. And then the full uh, string section here. And you'll see that I did some divisi, the cello for instance. The lower cello I made it play with the double bass and the upper uh, cello I made it play with the viola and the second violins. So let's hear the full orchestration now and you'll see it's quite different from the piano piece. <laughs> It's quite different, right? One thing that I added was all these uh, movement within the strings. Uh, this is something you cannot do with the piano. Um, I On the piano arrangement, I just did some chords. But yes, this is something that you should consider when you bring something from the piano uh, to the orchestra. There's some, some things that are not possible on the piano itself that you can exploit uh, within the orchestra. This technique to have da -da 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 -da, something played really fast uh, on the strings. Actually, when I composed this at first on the piano, I've, I, I was hearing this kind of rhythmic energy. So let's see how I made this happen with uh, the violins. Let's see the first violins first. Uh, they only have the melody. So you see that it goes from the melody uh, to these fast notes. And you see here I changed the articulation um, on the uh, sample instrument. In this case I'm using Albion 1 for the strings. 
And I played a little bit, you see down here, with the velocity of the notes uh, so that it feels uh, more realistic. Now let's see with the second and third strings, this, this little part here. So when I do this, it's the kind of thing that I try to uh, make it the less obvious possible. So all violins and violas are doing different things. Um, and it's not predictable. If you do something like... And it's always the same pattern. Uh, this kind of effect will feel redundant. If you really want to make it feel like this part is free and it's it's very volatile, it's very energetic, um, make it feel unpredictable like this. So it's never the same. Um, and you have also these other ones which are different and it goes into other directions. They're actually exchanging pattern. You see the second violin here uh, is doing da -da 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 It's going down, and the upper violin here is taking its place here. And we have different of these exchanges as well within the second violin and the, the viola here. Now let's add in the cello and uh, look at the beginning. <laughs> So we have also these uh, kind of staccato short notes in the beginning, but they're much more stable. And if you see the line here in green, uh, this is the cello. You see it's making short notes at the beginning. Um, and we can actually add in the double bass and you'll see even better. So the cello and the double bass here, uh, they're both doing short notes in the first phrase and longer notes in the second phrase. This is all to make the second part feels uh, like a development, like it's gonna lead uh, in, into the, the finale, into the, the last part here. So this is how I work on my string. It's quite different from uh, the, the piano arrangement. Maybe the bass line is kind of the same, um, but you can see that this is the, the, the piano version. Uh, I did a lot of different things. I added a lot of different things um, um, and new lines and things like that. Um, and actually, the second part, we have the melody. This part is uh, played by uh, the trumpet the second time around. Uh, and also some of the woodwinds. So we'll get to these in a second. So let's go have a look at the woodwinds now. Let's just listen to all of the woodwinds uh, at the same time. So you see that the woodwind part is much lighter and I think the oboe has the most uh, notes in this. But otherwise, let's see, the piccolo only comes in uh, in the kind of climax uh, leading to the end. It's not there for the whole beginning. The piccolo, if you add in too much, it can, it's kind of effect that you, you want to save for some important moments. If you start using it, our ears gonna be used to it and we just want to hear it more and more, more. So try and incorporate it into a crescendo or a climax or something like this. The flute I just added when the melody uh, played by the oboe becomes high enough um, because the flute uh, is uh, better in this register to be heard. 
And it does help uh, also when the second phrase uh, comes in, uh, the oboe goes down and uh, is, play, is doubled an octave above by the flute. Uh, there's also the trumpet that plays this melody, so uh, we'll see that in a second. As for the clarinets, they're mostly playing notes from the chords and here uh, doubling the flutes actually an octave below. And we have the English horn. The English horn is the lower version of the oboe. And here, uh, actually the beginning, it's uh, mostly doubling the melody uh, an octave below. And we have the bassoons, which are doubling, uh, the upper part is doubling uh, the cellos, and the lower part is doubling the double basses. It's actually a mix between the bassoon and contrabassoon. The, the, the low notes here are played by the contrabassoon. So anyway, we have these, and they play long notes at the end. At the end. Um, but notice that I'm really taking them out in the middle part. Um, this is when the second theme comes in. And the the whole strings start to be more active. It's good to do that uh, to uh, because we our attention is focused on the strings that start moving quite faster. Uh, so it's the right time to pull things off, so we can add them back afterwards and make them contribute again to uh, to uh, the crescendo towards the end. Let's look at the brasses now. We have uh, the tuba and the trombones which are doing uh, something really similar to uh, the contrabassoons at the beginning. Uh, I just take them off for the middle part, uh, same as the bassoons and the contrabassoons here, and I add them back in uh, for the ending part. We have the trumpets, which plays the melody and also uh, some of the notes from the chords in the second and third trumpets. And now the, let's add in the horns. The horns are really playing in complement with the trumpets here, as you can see. But be careful to use them in a little bit lower register. Uh, the horns have, uh, are more comfortable in the, this uh, kind of middle register around middle C. And let the trumpets take care of this upper register. And we see the trombones that comes up uh, above uh, the, the horns here. And they actually play with the horns for these notes. And you see that I leave the horns for this middle part. Actually, the horns play pretty much the whole section. Um, they add a lot of warmth and support to the rest of the of the strings. And I felt that since this is a kind of orchestral music that you want, um, you want it to feel like it's loud all the way. Uh, there's no soft section. The horns help to preserve this energy uh, while taking away some of the lowest register instruments for the beginning of this second phrase helps to uh, give some air and let the music breathe a little bit more. And it's the same with these short notes uh, in the bass line at the beginning, pum, pum, pum. It's how to make this first part feel uh, a little bit more understandable. We want to hear the melody, we want to hear the harmony, we want to hear uh, the different instruments a little bit more clearly. And the second time around, since we know the melody and we understand a little bit more the rhythmic patterns, uh, then uh, in this second part, it's time I decided to add it a little bit more. So let's hear only this brass section. The brasses are really the ones that make this part feel very powerful at the end. But let's hear everything with the percussions now. Um, you see that I've added a timpani. The timpani uh, supports the bass line. And also I have uh, just a couple cymbal rolls at the important moments. Uh, the beginning, uh, this is the climax where the harmony becomes static. And there's one at the end. Uh, for the for the last uh, big big chord. <laughs> So 
So you see here, uh, actually, this is the only one. The timpani is the only one playing here. Dum pa dum pa dum pa da 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 dum, uh, and it's helping create the, the 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 link between the first and the second phrase. It shows you it shows you how uh, percussions are so important. It's just one player, um, but they can really help uh, into creating some energy, tying the whole orchestra together sometimes with these small moves. Let's just see the end now and uh, show you how the, the percussion helps uh, into making this big, this, this big climax. That's an epic ending, right? This is all due to this last chord with the A sharp. Uh, it creates a lot of tension and just a combination of the cymbal roll and the timpani. The percussions are really good to help in these uh, climactic moments. Uh, you don't want to use them too much. You see, I only used, I only did like three moves of cymbals, uh, but nothing else, right? So to summarize, really understanding all these different instruments uh, within each section, their role, and how can they be um, uh, helpful to your music. We could say that flute, oboe, and clarinet are all instruments that can play the melody, the piccolo can help give some even more brightness to the sound of the flute. The English horn is going into the lower regions where the oboe cannot uh, because of its register. The bass clarinet, the bassoon, the contrabassoon, they can all help uh, in this uh, lower register. The contrabassoon um, being kind of a double bass to the bassoon, which is kind of more in the register of the cello, we could say. Now the brasses is really much divided into these four sections. The trumpet is actually uh, the upper register. The horn is uh, the middle register. The trombone is the middle to low register. And the tuba is uh, the sub uh, region of the spectrum. And now the strings are the same. The first and second violin can play in this upper region and can, can play very high, can play the melody, can play rhythmic patterns in the lower register, lower to higher register. The viola, if we add it in, uh, we see that it's pretty much the same, but but since we have access to a fifth below, it can play both with the upper strings and the lower strings. The cello, you see that I divided it in two. Uh, there's an upper uh, part that plays more with the upper strings as well, and the lower part plays with the double bass. And finally, the double bass, which help to uh, create a lot more depth in the sound. So yeah, this is my session. And I hope this gives you an idea on how to orchestrate and how to do a good orchestral mock-up, uh, the different ideas you can get uh, from the piano to the orchestra. I suggest you just be more familiar with the different instruments for the orchestra and the different subgroups like the contrabassoon, the piccolo, the English horn. There's a great book called The Study of Orchestration by Samuel Adler, and I would recommend you to study this. Now, although in this video I didn't show you the whole process and every my thought process within every single line, I have a video where I show the whole process of orchestrating a piano piece, and I invite you to go check it out.